Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on EMC consideration. For this video, I'm going to discuss on the frequency range of conductor emission and also radiate emission. Okay, so someone asked me okay, why we need to specific 30 megahertz. So this video, I'm going to explain to you why conductor emission concentrate on the lower frequency while radiant emission concentrate on the higher frequency. So this will be the objective of this video. This will be the part 55 series discussion on EMC. So guys, if you're keen to know more about EMC, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Okay, before I continue, okay, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by like this video. Okay, so this video will better broadcast to those who need to understand conducted emission and also radiate emission. So guys, if you are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe and also turn on your notification bell so that in future, okay, you will be able to see such video. So guys, once again, thank you so much for your strong support. Okay, so I have mentioned this. This is actually a very commonly used EMC standard for a consumer electronic product which does not have wireless communication functionality. Okay, so earlier on, I have concentrated on radio emission. Okay, so this video, I'm going to concentrate on conducted emission. As you can see from here, conducted emission is basically cable. Okay, so over here on your right will be for the power and on your left is basically all the input and output port. So in short, okay, conducted emission okay, need to be executed at all cables that is connected to your EUT. Let's go into deep detail on the definition on conducted emission. Okay, conducted emission refers to the noise component generated by a device or sub-circuit. Okay, so therefore, for example, this can be a device, can be a component that is the source of the noise. What happened here is basically they transfer to another device or sub-circuit via cabling or PCB trace. Okay, so for example, this is the noise source. So for example, the victim is here. As you can see there, there is a PCB trace. So what happened here is basically the noise source moving along the cable or PCB track, okay, and then finally reach the victim, and the victim actually has some degraded function in terms of performance. So basically, this is the definition on this conductor emission. Okay, another way okay, can be a parastatic capacitance. Okay, for example, let's now again imagine this as a noise source. Again, you can imagine that capacity effect Okay, basically, there will be capacitive coupling over to this ribbon cable. Okay, and the noise actually coupled onto the cable and the noise actually continue to propagate in the conductor of the ribbon cable. Okay, so this is also another definition of conductor emission. So in short, okay, you can see that it's basically a physical PCB trace that actually link the noise to the victim. Another is basically through the air. Okay, but end of the day, the noise source still stay within the conductor of the ribbon cable. And therefore, this is defined as conductor emission. Okay, conductor emission are a part of electromagnetic interference in circuit that mainly cause issue in deliver power quality owing to interference caused by harmonics arising from both linear and non-linear load okay, present in the electrical system. Okay, nowadays, okay, most of our circuit has a switch mode, okay, or for example, a clock, etc. Okay, so basically, these are all potential noise source for conducted emission, which I will further explain. Okay, engineers, okay, basically, we recognize that signal propagate through cables happen without reflection okay, when the cable length is much shorter than the signal wavelength. Okay, you can see from here, okay, so 
this is basically the length of the cable length. Okay, you can see from this diagram here, this is the wavelength. You can see that the cable length is much, much shorter as compared to the wavelength. Okay, which means that this signal is actually low frequency. Low frequency simply means large wavelength. Okay, so this is why couple emission are seen as a concern at low frequency, okay, where a lump element can be employed for the signal propagation medium. Okay, so in short over here, okay, the signal propagate through the cable without any reflection. Okay, once we have reflection, then it becomes radiate emission. Okay, so if there is no reflection without any reflection, then it will be classified as conducted emission. So under this case here, when the length of the cable is much, much shorter as compared to the wavelength of the signal. So therefore, the signal will not have any reflection and mainly dominate by conducted emission. Okay, if there is reflection, then it will be dominated by radiate emission. So this is what you mean over here. Okay, let me explain, okay, since you probably will not be able to understand okay, why there is no so-called reflection. Okay, when the cable length is much shorter than the signal wavelength, as you can see earlier on, okay, the signal actually experiences a uniform impedance. Okay, because the length is so short, okay, so therefore it actually can consider as a uniform impedance okay, along the length of the cable. Okay, when the impedance is uniform, okay, you know that reflection mainly will occur if there is a mismatch of impedance. When the impedance is all uniform, okay, you can again imagine that there won't be any reflection. And therefore, this is what you mean. The uniform impedance ensure that there are no abrupt change in impedance that will cause reflection. So therefore, the uniform impedance ensure that there is no reflection. And therefore, conducted emission become the dominant factor. Okay, so this is what you mean here. So instead, the signal travels smoothly through the cables without encountering impedance mismatch that will lead to reflection. So in short, when the length of the cable is much, much shorter as compared to the wavelength of the signal, there won't be any reflection. Since there is no reflection okay, because of uniform impedance, and hence for this kind of situation, conducted emission will be the dominant factor. Okay, if we have reflection, okay, remember when we actually have a reflection, then radiate emission will be the dominant factor. Okay, we will study a little bit on radiate emission okay, on the next few slides, okay, but this is what I want to discuss based on conducted emission. Okay, the reason why conducted emission are considered a big issue at low frequency C, okay, mainly is because of propagation, okay, because of free space path loss equation. Low frequency signal basically will have the tendency to be able to travel long distance. Okay, I'm not sure, okay, but if you still remember what we had discussed on free space path loss equation, okay, the lower the frequency, the longer that I can actually propagate. So once we have a low frequency signal, it becomes a big issue because they tend to have a tendency to travel longer distance through wires and trace as compared to higher frequency. Okay, higher frequency will have higher loss and therefore the signal becomes smaller and smaller or weaker or weaker. Okay, so this means that even small amount of interference generated within a device can travel significant distance and affect other nearby electronics equipment. Okay, sustainability. Okay, some electronics device operate at low frequency. Okay, in fact, we have still quite a fair bit of electronics device that actually operate at low frequency. They are actually very sensitive to interference. Basically, once we have low frequency through the conducted emission, then this electronics device will be affected. Okay, so basically, this is what it means here. Okay, crosstalk at low frequency, okay, crosstalk between different components or section of circuit can be worse then the effect of, because of the effect of conducted emission, okay, the crosstalk issue become very severe, okay, especially through at low frequency. Okay, crosstalk occur when signal unintentional couple. Okay, so this is basically through a capacitive couple to another nearby conductor, and basically the interference still stay within the conductor of the cable. So therefore, this type we classify as 
conducted emission. Okay, so let's take a look on another case. Okay, earlier on, I have mentioned that when the length of the conductor, okay, basically they are much, much so-called shorter than the wavelength. But for this situation, I actually consider that the length of the cable is actually much, much, much longer as compared to the wavelength of the signal. So earlier on, I have mentioned that radiant emission actually happened. Okay, because once we have a longer so-called uh, cables, okay, we cannot estimate or we cannot assume that it will be a uniform impedance. Because of the long cable, you can imagine that the impedance will not be so-called uniform and therefore reflection can happen. So let's quickly understand this. Okay, when the length of the cable significantly exceed the wavelength of the signal, okay, especially through at high frequency, okay, signal propagate along the cables tends to encounter reflection. Okay, remember I told you they will have more reflections. The longer the cable, the higher chances that we are going to have reflection okay, unless impedance matching is ensured throughout the signal path. Okay, and unless we do signal or impedance matching all along the path, if not, definitely we will have reflection. Okay, in such case, the propagation through the conductor can be effectively analyzed using a distribute model. Okay, so I have also done this transmission line discussion. Okay, so basically this is what I mentioned about transmission line theory. When the wire or when the cable is much, much longer as compared to the wavelength, then we cannot take this as a cable anymore. Okay, we take this as a transmission line and we need to analyze this cable as a transmission line theory. Okay, however, in practical application, system often employ conductors such as cable and circuit trace that aren't specifically designed as transmission line for high frequency. So for, for example, what it means here, okay, if this transmission line is throughout 50 ohm, then it will be perfect match. Then I will not have any reflection. But in the reality of world, okay, so basically the cable, okay, they are not really specifically designed as transmission line at high frequency. Okay, so this conductor can readily emit up signal as an electromagnetic wave. So therefore, this is so-called lump under radiate emission. Okay, once you have refraction, okay, basically you can imagine that once you have a refraction, it bounces back and the chances to have radiate emission become higher. So in short over here, conductor emission mainly will happen at the low frequency, while radiate emission will happen at the higher frequency. Okay, so basically this is a quick conclusion. The common rules, okay, basically what we as a designer need to consider is the critical conductor lengths that mark the transit from lump behavior to distribute behavior as following. Okay, so basically this is for lump system. Okay, so you need to ensure that the length is much, much so-called shorter than the wavelength divided by six. Okay, if we are going to to understand, analyze this as a distributed system, then the length need to be much, much bigger as compared to the wavelength over six. So basically, this is the common rules of thumb okay, in order to consider the critical conductor length. Okay, based on this, okay, we can also arrive on certain situation. Okay, but before I continue, okay, guys, again, okay, if you have learned something from this video, I urge you to help this channel I like this video and also if you're new to this channel please consider to subscribe to this channel thank you okay let's continue okay so the table basically show the wavelength for different frequency okay the associate critical length the structure whose typical dimension are compared to the critical length and the type of emission typically generate okay so over here you can see that as I mentioned earlier on conducted mainly on low frequency, radiate typically at high frequency. Okay, so you can see based on the frequency also. Okay, for example, these are so-called longer cable. Mainly they are used for public distribution network cable. So basically these are very long cable that bring, for example, power from one point to another point, for example. And we also have a building cable. Okay, for us typically, when we actually do uh, manufacture a EUT, uh, etc., we actually call this device connection cable. OK, 
Okay, so basically we are mainly under this device connection cable. Or uh, when we actually sell something, uh, for example, a uh, EUT, typically the length is about one point five meter. Okay, seldom we have cable that is five meter, fifty meter, etc. So typically, let's say we build a device. Okay, it come along with a cable. Okay, the cable length typically is about one point five meter. Okay, so therefore over here you can see that all these are so called lump under conducted. Okay. Wow, anything okay, basically with a device okay, connection cable, or maybe when we actually implement the design of the device on a PCB, typically okay, you can imagine that the length will be much shorter. Okay, so therefore, all these are lump under radiate high frequency. So, in short, over here, you can see that okay, 30 megahertz and below under conducted, 30 megahertz and above under radiate emission. Okay, so basically this will give you some idea on the frequency range to conduct okay, for basically conducted emission and radiate emission. Let's do a very quick conclusion here. Okay, traditionally, the separation line between conductor and radiate emission is actually set at 30 megahertz, which I have illustrated on the previous slides here. Okay, where the wavelength in free air is actually approximate 10 meter. And typically, our length is around 1.5 meter or 1.7 meter. Okay, the purpose of EMC regulation is to evaluate emission from device, commonly referred to as the EUT, as well as their cable. Okay, remember, okay, we beside radiate emission, okay, we also need to be concerned the so-called the noise source at the cable. Okay, since the typical dimension of device and also shape cables can extend up to 1.5 meter. Okay, the table earlier on demonstrate that radiate emission from this component may only occur at frequency existing 30 megahertz. Okay, this happens when the dimension of the conductor within the EUT, okay, they are surpass the critical length. Okay, so however, for another scenario, when the frequency is below 30 megahertz, okay, generally they do not result in significant radiate emission. So testing of the EUT usually focus solely on conducted emission. So in short, frequency below 30 MHz, conducted emission. Frequency more than 30 MHz, radiate emission. So with this, okay, I would like to end my discussion. Again, I urge you guys to help this channel by like this video. And if you guys are new, okay, please consider to subscribe to this channel. Thank you guys. Once again, I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you so much.